Hello everybody. Today, preliminary look, simple perspective. Theory of perspective obviously is that parallel lines, when they move away from you, get closer together. It has been called the Cassandra effect. But I'm going to draw this ruined priory here because there are several forms of perspective in it. There's height, there's distance, and we're also going to be looking at depth. I'm going to use this nice pale grey oil pastel to mark everything out. Now, here's the ground. So the ground's pretty level right across. There's the ground in. There's a person standing right centre picture. So that's the height of that figure. And then there's another person in the distance. And that person here is right in the centre of this huge archway. So those are the two bottom marks for that broken arch. Now, as the broken arch goes up, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use a ruler temporarily. As the broken arch goes up, it will lean inwards, apparently. But in actual fact, it's just the thing about parallel lines. As parallel lines move away, they seem to get closer. And the other side, because we're looking from nearer to this side, that doesn't lean quite so much. So those two lines there are the inside of that arch. Now, there's some broken brickwork here. And there's a, a buttress of some sort still hanging on. The shadow underneath. Some more broken brickwork. Then it comes down and again, the base will be slightly wider and up here. So that's the sort of angle it comes down. And then this is a thick wall. About halfway down, there's this colonnade and you're standing here, out here, looking up. So this colonnade will be running smaller into the distance. Okay, and again I'm going to use the ruler. And here is part of that colonnade. Now this is a family photo again, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of research to find the rest of this colonnade. And again, I'll say why I'm using photographs at the beginning. If we went outdoors, the light would be changing, the people would be moving, and they are a distraction we don't need. So a photograph is much better for you in the early stages of learning. So from this piece here, there's a piece of wall that goes out here, and that meets this colonnade here. And that also goes to the ground and have the same effect. So the perspective lines will go to a dot way up there somewhere. So that's what's happening. They all go to one point. Then this wall, we've got a little archway here. I'm just going to sketch it roughly. Little archway that runs up to about this height. We don't have to be accurate. Got to get a feeling of the place. So the archway that runs to there. Then in this colonnade, a little bit further in, there's another archway. And it looks slightly as if it's leaning because of the perspective points. Top of the arch is about here. Those are the two arches. They seem to have roughly the same height because this one is higher than this one. Now, I can't do anything with this wall until I've looked it up to see what happens there. So we'll go to the other side of the ruined abbey. So because we're in this picture, we're actually inside the abbey looking out. So this was a main window. If we go across, 
look across to there. I've got broken brickwork again. And this broken brickwork is part of an arch. And we can clearly see this is all arched stone. So the whole archway is broken out and fallen. And then there's some above it as well. There's another piece of arch here. And that goes up. And then there's some more buttress in there. Another internal arch that's been broken out, I believe. And then there's some stonework that goes up at this sort of lofty angle here and goes to about that point and comes down. So this is now the entrance as such, has been a window, but is now the entrance to this ruined abbey. Behind this broken opening, there actually is a piece of wall at slightly another angle. That piece of wall comes to around this height. It's below the top of this arch. And the wall itself is that side of the centre. So this is that end wall. That comes down to a broken buttress here. And then that little person is standing there. Now this is slightly too high, it actually comes to about there. And then it goes off, but it isn't the same angle as this. It's slightly more of a dropped angle, like this. And that's because it's higher and further away. And that goes down to here and drops and then it has some stonework at the bottom. There are a couple of windows in here. We're not going to worry too much about detail at the moment. There's another column here. Now this is the centre of that column. And the column is shaped. And it is the bottom of this broken stonework. There we are, it matches up quite nicely. But we're only worried about the bottom for just for the moment. And inside here, in, I don't know if this is the nave I'm guessing, there is the shadow of more stonework. And then there is a flat piece, and this then is the wall of that large archway. So this is the left hand side of that large arch, and about here will be the right hand side. Now, oddly enough, this arch is the twin to this arch. The thing about that is that this arch, although it's at an angle away from you and looks narrowed, will be exactly the same size as this arch. Same shape, same size. It's just the way we're seeing it. So perspective narrows things as well as pulls things together. And the way we can check this out is Think about this top of this arch, and it is at this sort of angle. And if we bring that angle down and slowly drop this side here, like that, this archway should come to about here. So that should be roughly the point of this, this arch, because it looks so much higher than that arch, because that one is further away. So if I just that in like that and then this side I do believe this is a Norman arch this wall has fallen in so this has nothing to do with perspective here the wall has actually dropped over this way slightly so it comes out not quite where it's supposed to be. There's some fancy stonework of some sort. And then the wall comes up and above you, up and above you, like that. But it's broken here by a rounded piece. And because you're looking up at it, it will be like an ellipse. Like that. 
and there are windows in this wall and they're leaning, leaning inwards here. So there are windows here. So there is a, a split in this stonework and just above the split there's broken edging of a roof line. So that's sketched all of that in that I can see on this picture except looking through this archway. So this is an old chapel wall here outside the Priory and then it looks like well it's, it's a, a land feature and then looks like some wooded hillside beyond there and some of that wood comes down to here and I think there are trees and there are distant trees here in the fog. I think the same this side. I think these are trees in the fog. And then there are people here and they're on the ground here. So there are people. We'll get onto detail later. And then there's the bishop by the way walking along here. Uh, there's probably a lady in a red coat actually. And he's walking there. I think that's all the people, isn't it? Yes. The person in the centre, and they look as though they're filming for YouTube. This part here is slightly more broken. I don't know why. But although the top is badly broken, it's actually the roof line. So I'm going to take a guess that it runs right out over there. And it's rather broken up. Okay. That is the sketching done. And we're not going to mask off today, we're going to do free painting, free painting. So we're going to paint the sky, being careful not to go over too much. Let's prepare to paint the sky everybody. So we're going to mix the blue for the sky. It's a rather nice blue, it's warm, it's uh, fairly dark for sky blue, but as you can see there's a mist rising and the mist has a slight yellowness. Like I've said before, a lot of art is about observation. You've got to learn how to see things. I've got this nice clean palette, if you can call it that. Brilliant blue, about five P's. Three P's of ultramarine. A smidgy poodles of Rose Madder, and I think it's seven or eight P's of mixing zinc white. So mixing zinc white is not as thick as normal. So I'm just going to put gel into this corner, a fair bit of gel, because I want to spread this paint about. I'm going to mix with the brush rather than palette knife again. And this time I'm going to use a big round brush so that it can hold lots of paint in the bristles. This particular one, number 11 round, will do the job nicely. So I'm looking at the blue in the top right corner. And if I get all those together there, okay, so that's not warm enough. Right, it's gone the right way. Let's put the white in and a touch of this rose madder. And it goes, the oil is in the bottom corner. Did you notice that the blue went slightly warmer because the oil is slightly pink, slightly orange actually. A little bit more ultramarine. I'm going to have to put some more ultramarine into this. A little more ultramarine, so I'm just going to pick a bit of that off. This is the colour that I'm after. There's a quite a lot on the brush. I'm going to this top right corner where that nice warm blue is. And we'll go from the corner. Okay. See, I'm going from the corner out for the moment, anyway. A little bit more oil into this. Okay, I'm going to add. A little bit more white 
into the paint. I've got white here still. A little bit of white in. A little touch of oil. So I'm going back up to that right hand corner. Here we go back in towards that darker blue because the, the darker blue is in the top corner going down to this mist. So the blue runs down here and fades away. So the darkest, most intense part is up in that top corner. So now I'm mixing actually on the canvas. Now I'm going to mix what I've mixed already, mix it a little bit more. So in a minute I'm going to go to a flat brush and I'll put a little bit more blue on. I'm going to go to a flat dry brush and mix that in a little bit better. But we're getting lighter as we go down. A bit more zinc mixing white. Always best to put the lids back on straight away. The problem being that some oil paints are so thick that they, they start to dry very very quickly. Pick up a bit of oil in that goes. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once it goes onto this canvas, it'll mix in well. Here you can see that it's paler than what was on before. So we do a little bit of a mix just to get it started. Then clean the brush. I'm gonna bring the brush down, give it a little clean on the cloth because I don't want the blue that's in the brush to spoil the color that I want on there. A bit more white white in, bit of blue back into it, don't want it too light, bit of oil or gel. Lighter again you see, go around this stonework, see the blues come out the brush there, just pull that off, put the lighter blue back on and then we just keep doing that as it runs out into the mist. And then we're going to come in here, put a little bit more white into the paint again, a bit more gel into the paint. So I'm going to just do what's inside here and then do the rest to match it. Pick the rest of that white up and then it gets really white so I'm just going to have to squeeze a bit more of this white in. Two and a half peas of white and then just looking across here, it isn't pure pale blue as it comes down into the mist it yellows slightly. So I'm going to use what is a warm yellow, that is this Naples yellow, just a, a little bit in there and then a little bit of oil onto the blue, bring a bit more paint into it, good amount of the white, just going to put a bit of white into that. Sometimes when you mix on the canvas you can cause it to have certain effects and we're looking for that smoky misty effect. So we're going to get this pale effect here. We're just going to put a bit on there and then run a bit into this blue and then a little bit of white. Now I'm touching this brush onto here very lightly. Effect here and then there's a bush in shot at the bottom out here. That's very dark. So we just pick up some white and some oil, clean off the brush a little bit, dab those together. So I'm just going to go back up to this top left corner. I'm dipping the brush in the oil, I'm picking up the white. And then I'm going to dab a, a little bit of Naples yellow into that here. Rub it in. A 
Okay, stopping at that point. Picking up a clean flat brush. It's dry, it's a number 12. Going back up to the sky to take some of these marks out with this brush. What I'm doing is trying to smooth it down, take some of the marks out that are in the sky. Because it's a very smooth sort of spring day sky and make it look like it's all one rather than little bits sky here and there now I'm just going to stop using the brush a minute trust the old kitchen roll and here's a little trick see these lines disappearing as you dab roll gives you that rather misty effect. So, okay, I'm going to call that the sky done to that point. So we've got a good starting point. We've done perspective, we've done depth, and we've done a sky. Right, I'm just going to sketch in where the other arch would go. Uh, first of all, I notice there's a buttress showing outside this one. So there's the buttress outside and it's further away, so it will be higher. This is lower, that is higher. This wall here is quite dark at the bottom, but to remember that. And then this next arch will be the same sort of distance away as the arch is plus, to, plus a little bit. So this will be the wall of the next arch. Pick up my trusty ruler. You see the line of the top wall? This one will be closer here and further there. Little line there. This will be the top of the arch centre here. So that will be that arch. Now I've seen something else also. This line should come down below the grass line. I don't know how I've managed to make that mistake. And the same with these. So this bottom line. And we can go back now to the sky. So here's my sky palette. Back to my trusty round number 11 brush. Okay, so I've got this white and this yellow here. Pop them into that blue. There's not enough white. Not enough white, folks. So, titanium white because it's brighter. I've got this little mixture here, which is virtually these colours here. And pick up a bit of the oil at the bottom here. Pick up some of the white so that I can get the shade that I'm after. Just keep looking at the subject and then let's just pop some of this sky in here. Pull it out thin, we can pull it out fairly thin. And then the next one is virtually the same, very slightly lighter. So this matches with this up here. There's just a little bit of yellow missing at the top. Touch of yellow, touch of white. That matches that in quite well. Now the invented archway. Just scrubbing that on. Got a match with the top up here, so I'm just touching the yellow, touching the white. Okay, that's quite a good match. So I'm going to call that done at the moment. Okay, this arch is a warmer blue, so it's lighter than the blue above, coming down to light, and it's also misty. So let's have a look at this warm blue. Yes, this will do it nicely. I'm going to run that warm blue into this white a little bit. Yeah, that shade's just right. So that goes down here. white and yellow, mixing on the canvas now. It's not a problem. 
if you find mixing on the canvas convenient for you that's the way to do it so the next thing we're going to do are the bushes in between bushes on against the sky very often look purple so just a touch of this permanent magenta I'm just going to pop it there so I'm just going to bring a little bit across mix it in what I'm doing is pulling the paint the blue paint into that magentaized color and that gives me that feeling of that bush and I'm going to do this part here all the colors at the bottom and then we'll pop some white into it and this arch here has the bush here and it's not quite as magenta so we'll come back to put a bit of blue into the paint pick the flat brush up again and then as we look along at these two arches there's very little of the magenta it's more of a dark blue so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the dark blue not a lot a little bit of the white we call that done now, so that's just the detail, the distant detail on this rather early morning misty day. Most of that stone is the same shade, it's a sort of a, I'm guessing it's a grey limestone in actual fact, but it is very grey. So the next thing to do is mix up a little bundle of the mid-grey, the mid-colour of that stone. Okay, so I'm going to start mixing the grey colour for the stonework. I've got zinc white or flake white or sometimes Chinese white. Good amount. Then just a touch of buff titanium. A bit more than a touch. Because it's stonework and there's always a buff colour in this sort of stonework. Then lamp black, because lamp black is flatter and darker. I don't want a lot of it, not at this point, but I'm putting a 1p there, 1p here, but because there are some darker areas. Then a little touch of violet, 450 violet, because there's always a sort of a bluey violety tinge about distant snow, well, distant anything really, but distant stonework. Gel in the corner. See that gel's got a sort of an orangey tinge to it. That will come out in the paint. A bit more of that, a little bit more, just a touch. I've got a number 10 flat, and I'm going to brush mix this together because then I'll have a loaded brush and I can slap all that colour on. While I'm brushing this flat, I'm loading this brush up. I'm looking across and I can see exactly where on the subject this colour fits. So we go right to the top of here and down just to about there. Actually it gets lighter so we're going to add some white into that at some point. But that is a broken arch. We want it to look like a broken arch. Then where else is this shade? It's over here. And we can scrub this on. And this limestone has been open to the elements. It started to darken. That's how that looks. Darker down here. We come back to that. And then we've got a, a patch here. It's very hard to tell whether that goes in or comes out. But this wall here is very similar at this point to the colour that we've got. And that goes darker as it goes up and there's some lighter here. 
So next thing we'll look at is this part of this arch. Now this arch here, this little part here, is actually reflecting the sky and there's a piece below here as well that's very similar colour just here and then below it is another piece in a bit more white that comes down into this one give the brush a wipe on the cloth keeping the colour in it going back to this arch here it's gone very dark in a lot of places so we can start working on that now Number 8 flat, it's a nice soft hogs hair, one of my favourites, as you can see by all the colour that's in it. I'm going to pick up some of the gel, now the gel is mixing nicely with the lamp black, so I'm going to run that into here. Not enough, still not enough. Okay, I've got this colour on the brush, I'm going to run that in. And if you look at the picture, it actually does do this, it runs down. I'm going to run that edge along with. And run that in. And then it's dark here as well. Part under the arch. I'm scrubbing this. See those lines that come in? They're going to help me with that column. And then we've got the actual arch itself here. Scrub down to there. Pick a little bit of that paint up. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So it's quite light here. And this building is quite light here. So we're going to look at mixing that particular colour and see where else that fits. Uh, 635, Naples yellow. Uh, because the bit that I'm doing has a warmer, slightly yellower look. So I'm dibbling a bit of that into that corner. Then a new tube of this zinc white or flake white. A whole load of that in there, like that. Before I do anything, I'm gonna remix this color. Uh, that's just lifting that back up. And that little bit of yellow just lifted it up a little bit. I've got my basic grey. Remember I got it off the brush earlier. I'm putting it into there. Taking a big lump of that white. A little touch of this oily lamp black. Then a little touch of this Naples yellow. And you see it just brightens that up. Touch more white. And then we'll try it out here. And that looks like the shade I want. Yep, yeah, that's the shade I want. I'm going to scrub that in. There are some windows here that pick up these light colours. Just put the idea of those windows in very quickly using that shade, allowing the paint to come down in that shape. Follow the shape of the building. The wall is coming towards you and going slightly round. I think it's just where it's been damaged, to be honest. And then there's a, a light shade near the bottom. Those windows come down further. Just keep an eye on the stonework because you can't make it feel like stonework. It doesn't have to be accurate. You don't have to put every brick in. The stonework goes up and down, follows the line of the building. So I'm using the brush in that way. A little bit of the lamp black here. It's dark up here. Then there's a, there's a dark shadow here. And then there's more dark shadow down here coming up. So we paint upwards into it. 
just going to scrub this in for the moment. Okay, so the inside of that arch is quite dark. There's a dark patch here, so I'll just put a bit more dark in here. Dark patch here. Keep the shape of the arch. Big dark patch here. And it's quite dark here. What we're doing here is making marks. This is the modern way to talk about it, making mark. Everything is made up of different types of mark and we decide ourselves how we're going to express them. So because I'm using this wide flat brush, my marks are already as such going to be similar to that brush and they are part of the whole picture like a jigsaw. Now down here it's dark. There's some dark at the top here I want to look at quickly and that is a piece here goes down that side. Yeah, I'm just dabbing into my black and my gel um, as well as picking up the paint that I've already got on my palette here. Dark edges here. Just pull the brush down. I'm now going to look at the walls on this side. They just have a slight purpling about them. A little bit of violet here. I need a dark grey here. So I pick up some of this black. And I'm mixing it with the brush again as usual. Need some of the oil, the gel. Just want to get the shade. I keep looking back at the subject. This is about the shade of the grey that I want. I'm now going to dot in little bits of violet. I've dotted in little bits of violet. Put a little bit more black in. Bring a little bit more white in. A little bit more white in. The brush is quite well loaded. So we're going over here. And this is heavy shadow up here. And that goes right the way through to this arch. That whole corner seems to be in shadow. The same shade comes down here as well. And comes down to this person here. Still the same palette, still using the same brush. Dabble it in the gel, pick a tiny bit of violet up and this white. So back up here. And then by to here. added some white into the paint there. Get the shape of the arch in. Go back to here. This gets lighter down here. Go from the base upwards. For some reason this has a dark edge. We'll put the dark edge in. And for some reason there's a dark edge here. just the way the stones oxidise. And there's a footing block here on this column. I'm just going to put a little bit more yellow into this. There. And then mix a little bit of the lighter grey. Go up from the block. See how the gel is mixed with the violet? Pick a little bit of that up, mix that in. Quite like the way the marks come out, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Okay. It's a little round number three hogshead. Nice little brush. This buttress here. It is very pale. Put a bit more white in. A bit of that oil. Put a bit of Naples yellow into it and drag 
jagged here. Sometimes by accident you've got the colour that you want for another area on your palette. So we've done this big area up here. We've got another building completely outside of the walls with this person standing here. And then there's another piece of building down here. And there's some distance, something going on in the distance. So let's have a look at this building next. Just going to squirt a little bit of zinc white into that corner. A little bit of the oil with the violet. Pick up a lump of that white. This is from the sky earlier. Just pinched a bit of the cerulean blue. In that goes. It's quite a strong colour. A bit of purple in, a little bit of the black in. Bit more of the purple, touch of the white. Pick some of that grey up that I made before. Back to the painting. Yeah, that's the colour I want. And you see little bits of the white, unmixed white, popping out into the colour as well. It's all good. end of this wall is slightly lighter and it goes to a darker mark here. So I'm going to go back to the little round size 3 and I'm picking up the same paint but I'm mixing in a little bit of Naples yellow and a tiny bit of white because I really want the different shades in there because uh, it's stonework after all. And then there are these windows. But they're just the shadows of windows. So we go across to this little building here next. Now if we look at the subject, the side and the top of the building have this colouring in. But the bottom part is quite pale and yellowy. Use the same paint for the side first of all, side of the building. And then we scrub in the top, just scrub it in. And then we mix up a little Naples yellow, just putting small white in. More Naples yellow, more white. Just picked up some of the zinc white off the palette, not too much. And there's one window and then we see the bottom of another. I'm picking up a little bit more of the violet and oil. And I'm just going to dabble that in there. That's the sort of colour of that. Mixing in some white. We're moving on quite well, we're getting perspective here. So these perspective lines show us distance and these lines going this way show us distance that way. So the painting goes further and further back, shows a sort of a misty distance. So everything is giving us depth. So what we're looking at here is depth and perspective. And lightening this, this is at the bottom of that arch the Naples yellow. That's better. So I'm going to do a, a little bit more of the large stuff 
uh, on the stonework here and then we're going to put the grass in so that we've actually got a base to everything. Just going to pick up a bit of the, the gel with the grey and the violet in. Work them into the paint that I've got. That's the remains of an internal arch up there. And then this stone coming down. And this colour goes across to there. And stops about there. Now while I've got this colour, I'm just going to do the base here of this stonework. And it's slightly purpley. So I pick up a little bit of that and fire it. And it goes. a dark patch here. Oh, wonderful. The brush did the work for me. And then there's a dark patch inside this arch. Okay, just going to stop for a moment now, clean the brushes that I'm using, and we'll put the grass in on the base of the picture and then we can go back and look at bits of detail as such. So first of all, I'm going to dabble a bit of zinc white. Then we're going to put in a good one, two, three, four, five peas of sap green. Then one, two, three, four peas of viridian. This is viridian hue. Sometimes viridian green is a slight difference to three peas of yellow ochre into that bottom corner, just a little gel. Then the number eight flat, again, nice soft number eight flat. I'm gonna pick off some of the sap green and some of the gel, some of the ochre. Now I'm always checking over there with the subject, the photograph, to make sure I'm going the right way with the color. So. This paler green goes across here, across here, and across here. I'm scrubbing it off slightly with the brush as I go. And it shows here. And it shows here. So we've got the pale green that has sunlight on it. There's an area of lighter green down here. It's not the same colour quite, but it is a similar tone. So I'm just going to scrub it in off the brush. Then we've got to look at the darker green that gives us the distance between the two greens. Any shadow that might be on it, but the shadows on a colour are the opposite colour on the colour wheel. And the opposite of green is red. But when I look at this picture, I hardly see any red in it. So I'm going to use blue instead as the shadow for the green. Good grassy green, pick up some oil, pick up some more oil. Okay, and then we go off to the picture. Not quite yellow enough. Just put some cadmium here, another two peas of cadmium. It's not bad this green, but I'm not entirely happy. Try this here. Oh yeah, quite like that. more cadmium.
Here we've got quite a bit of shadow in this green, put a bit more viridian in. It's burnt umber, one little pea. The brush has still got green on. So I'm picking that pea up of the umber just on the edge of the brush. This little dark section here, there's a little bit more of the green to do. And that is the edges here. And the edges go darker for whatever reason on this particular place. I think it's shadows of the bushes and the buildings. It's going to pick up some of this darker green, mix it with a bit of cadmium. And I just want to scrub at these edges. This is just to take away the hard lines a little bit and help giving us the distance that we want. Okay, so let's just work those in together. Run that up into the sky a bit, and then down into this. So I'm just going back to my gray palettes here. Looks like a bit of a mess, but I can see all the different shades. And I've got a clean brush. It's this big flat 10, number 10 flat hogs here. And I'm just going to pick up small amounts of color. But across here, the bottom of this some real dark here I'm just going to dab some of the paint off the brush so the brush is quite dry I'm going to draw it up here Draw that dark down, it's not quite dark enough here. Put a bit of shape into that arch, it's like a shadow in the wall. And that goes underneath this broken arch and down. There's a dark area here under this window. The window is almost gone. Scrub it on. Some dark in the stone here. They have these arch shapes and I'm just going to pick up some grey and just put some shape in here as a broken archway. Okay, we need some yellows yellowing into here, sort of mid greys at the bottom here. Looking at this side again here, so I'm just going from side to side, making sure that everything is in the right place in terms of depth, and then it just fades in. Like that. We've got some pale brickwork here, stonework, that I've got to put in. There's a person standing here. So I need to bring this dark stone down to the person and there's some shadow down at the bottom. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush. I'm putting this brush on one side for a minute. Number three round hog's hair. And going back to the picture here, the shade that I've already put on is fine and it's still wet as you can see. It hasn't been on very long. Pull that down. 
to the person, to the figure that's standing here. It's going to pop some Naples yellow into the palette back in that corner where it was before. A little bit of zinc white at the top end of the palette. On the original, a piece of that archway has got the sun on what actually is a sort of a sandy limestone. I've got that little bit of pale grey and Naples yellow. There are several areas that have this sandy coloured grey on there that I'm about to use. That's one. We've got some here. A little bit here. There's some down here. to dark now and just pick some dark grey up. That's that dark grey next to it. And some dark here coming down and around. some very dark in this corner. Just putting a little bit of violet into it. And there's some very dark. Just here. slightly lighter. Right, so we've got to now finish the stonework, and that means little bits of detail, edges, some up here, uh, and I'm going to use some of the grey that's left over that I wiped off the brush earlier and just get the right tone. So I'm using a small flat brush, this is a number six flat, a well used one. And I'm going to lift off this grey that I've got here. Double that in. Just going to add some black into here. I'm going to add a lamp black. Just a little bit of lamp black. Lamp black because it's duller. Slightly darker, slightly duller. Till I get the level that I want. Just lifting some grey out of there. And just adding a little bit of gel. Just lifting some of the gel up. There's quite a lot of paint on the brush already. Check with the picture, put a little bit of black in on the edge of this brush. See that bit of black came out there? It's 
Sometimes the brush does the work for you. You can hear that I'm scraping it down because I've got a minimum amount of paint. It's stonework, it looks flat. Just picking some lighter grey and some darker bits of tone. I'm going to call that done. If you fiddle around with these things too much, it can often go wrong easily. Now, while I've got this tone on the palette, there's a bit up here. Oh, quite like that. There's some dark tone down here. There's some dark tone inside this arch. tone here. We'll call that done. Then we've got some over here. I need to add a little bit of white to what I'm using here. Just a blob of titanium white in the top there. That will do for what I'm intending. So I've still got this mid to dark grey on so I'm going up here for a moment to this broken arch. There's a shadow another shadow underneath, a space, another shadow, and then there's quite a dark shadow here, and then there's a dark edge, okay? Then we're using the white, so I'm going to mix this white in there. So I've got some gel, I've got some white, just pull it into this grey. I'm doing the archway, broken arch on the other side now. So there's a broken arch on the inside of the building. So let me just do the top of it. Okay, just looking around to make sure I can't use the same paint somewhere. Maybe could here. Okay, get away with that. Bit of the black dabbled in. And there's a oxidized stone up there. Then there's a separator. Then there's a shadow and another long shadow below it, a space, and one, two shadows. There's some dark shadowing down the wall here. Right, there's some dark edges up on here, just dabbling in the grey. So what I'm doing, the brush has got plenty of paint on, but the tips of the brush are quite dry. So I'm drawing it down, because that's how the stonework oxidises. Funnily enough, the rainwater runs down it and causes those marks. You have to think about stuff like that while you're painting, it's what you're trying to express. There's some lighter patches that need to go in there. Yep. Yeah. Let's just deal with some of the lighter patches. So I'm going to use some buff titanium. Now there's a patch there where I've used it before. So I'm going to dabble a bit onto that patch. Then I'm going to add some zinc white. There's a little clear patch there, zinc white. So we've got one or two areas where there are bits of light stonework. Grey into the buff there. A little bit of the zinc white or flake white, whichever you've bought. Spread it just a little. Yeah, that's pale enough now. So some of this pale is here. I do believe it's a broken window. OK, 
Okay, I'm not going to mess around much more with this. If you mess around too much, it eventually will go wrong. So just lighten the top of this broken window and this one. So there's a bit of light coming in through there. This wall here needs a few lighter patches. Here we go. And then there's some lighter patches in the stonework over here. Just going down this edge. Yep, these are little, little short strokes of the brush. Dropping fair little bits of paint on, quite little chunks of paint go dropping on there. Just gives you the idea of stonework. Yeah, we'll call that finished. The whole painting is finished to this point. So let's deal with the people next. Looking at the subject, the nearest person here has a cape on. That's this person. And that coat is a sort of a rather odd orangey pink. What I'm going to do is mix the colour, roughly, and then it's going to be mostly in the shade. Then all the other people are pretty much very dark, just odd dots of colour. Fresh palette, rose madder, just a touch. Cadmium yellow, a pea. Touch of lamp black, large pea sized amount. We don't want to be wasting paint. Then burnt umber. Final thing, a bit of buff titanium. Large P. Now I can see that this head is sort of backlit. So I'm going to use the buff titanium at the back of the head just as it is to start with. So I'm going to mix a bit of these two here. It's getting towards the colour. I'm going to pinch off a bit of that buff titanium. I'm not going to over mix it. The problem is this low light gives all sorts of shades of colour. Picking up some of the buff titanium and putting it on first around the person's head. Now I'm going to the colour that I've mixed, a sort of pastel orange colour, and I'm going down the cape. I'm using, by the way, here a little round brush. This is a round number three. I don't often use small brushes like this, but we just need a little bit of detail here. Now the top of the cape is catching a bit of light, so I'm going to dabble a bit of tough buff titanium into that. And then the rest of the cape is dark, burnt umber, and a bit of tough buff titanium, and a little bit of this orangey colour. Oh yes. And then we need completely dark. Okay, solid burnt umber now on the brush. is happening around the head there. Then he's got one leg straight down and one out at the front. The leg that's down straight has got a highlight at the back of it. But the one that's going out forward is really quite dark. Lamp black into the colour that I've got here, the burnt umber mixture. Leg out the front and then some dark here. 
pick up buff titanium just as it is. Something darker there. Oh, that's what it is. A little bit of shadow around there. So, calling that person pretty much done. Now we're going to go on to this person here in the middle. Goodness knows what this person is doing, I can't see. A backpack and legs being very dark, first of all. Because it's looking slightly uphill, the head is in a similar plane. So it looks like head, purplish coat, black backpack, shadow, black legs. Just lamp black with a little bit of the brown mixed in. You don't want to be too dark. And I'm going straight for legs. Yeah, so I'm using the same brush here. I'm just mixing the colours into the brush all the time because all the colours are quite similar. Backpack is dark. Angled down. Coming out, sort of orangey colour around the head. So I'm coming back to mixing. I'm just cleaning off the black of the brush. I'm going to mix in a touch of violet here. The brush is cleaned off. It has a vague amount of black in the bristles. I'm going to pinch back some of this orangey colour. Because I can see some orange here. Picking up some violet, picking up some buff titanium. I think that's the shade I want. Okay, back to the painting. Pick up a little bit of lamp black. Just a tiny touch on the brush. I'm going to darken the backpack. There's a strange shadow there. all that done. There's a bit of a halo of mist paintwork around the person. I'm going to leave that on. So let's have a look at the people inside the building then. Okay we've got one person here. I'm picking up burnt umber. We've got a person here that's got his elbow out and he's leaning away from his elbow. So his body is like a trapezium here. A bit of shadow where he's bent over. I'm going back again to brown and he's actually looking down. So we're looking virtually at the top of his head there. Just going to pick up a tiny bit of buff titanium. That. Mixing lamp black with brown. He's got a space here, he's got one leg bent in. We've got a person here, once again in a long coat. Some burnt umber and I'm going to lighten it slightly. A bit of buff titanium, tiny bit of black. So the person with the coat is almost the same height. As the other person, picking up lamp black, person's head, something pale at the front here, something pale happening there. And this person has a very long coat and the two legs almost together underneath. But a small person against shadow. He's going to put some shadow in there. So I've got some dark grey on the brush. So I'm just going to do the inside of this arch.
Oh, I'm not going to touch it anymore, that will do for that. While I've got a dirty brush, although it's a small brush, I wouldn't normally do this. I'm going to bring out the grey palette again. Just finish the bottom of the arch there. I'm just going to take shades as I need them. I can see that I've splashed that in and it's not correct. So let's have some darker. Because the base actually is a piece of shadow. Yeah, that sort of shade there. The shadow goes across the wall like that. Just foreshorten that arch a little bit. Just darken this edge. Darken that edge off. Then there's some broken stonework. Pick a little bit of paler grey. Broken stonework on the edge. and just dabble this around a little bit, still wet of course. To give me the shadow to put the person against. And that can go up that arch a little way. And then there's a stone box here, almost like a, a coffin. So we're going to put that in, there's a lot of buff titanium there. I'm just going to pick up this palette here that I was mixing for the people. And I've got a big wad of buff titanium just there. Come across to here, where this stone box is. I'm going to put the whole thing in, side and front and top, all in one go. And then the front itself, I'm just going to dabble into some grey. Front has some grey in it here. And then it's just the small person standing in the shadow here. So I'm guessing it's a child. Head. Also wearing an overcoat. So I've got the buff titanium mixed with a little bit of burnt umber. See an arm and a coat. Pick up some burnt umber and black. to put some legs in. Another reason to use these types of palettes is I put cling film over them so if I'm going to be holding on a day or two before I need them I can open them up just like lunch and there's my green from the grass. I've got my dark green there dabble away at it, mixing this mixture that I had on the brush. And the mixture was burnt umber and little bits of grey. Nice dark shadow in the window. Dark shadows around there and here. And then there are odd bits of dark shadow around these people, around their feet. And a little bit of that dark green here goes over there, over this side. darker shadow just around there and through the archway. I think we can call that painting done. I don't want to put too much detail in, it's a simple painting of the ruins on an early morning with a bit of mist and a few people inside the church. If you enjoyed this exercise in perspective and colour please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon.